Hello everyone and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're down in section 14 and in module 1 and in this section we're going to be talking about creating indexes and tables of contents. So in this first module we're going to concentrate on how you can create an index. Now if you're not entirely sure what an index is, well you've probably already seen them before in the back of a book. So essentially an index will reference which page certain words appear. So that is what we're going to do here. We're going to go through, we're going to mark some items, and then we're going to create an index. Now, all of these utilities we're going to be using are up on the references ribbon. And you'll see here we have an index group. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this document. And any time we want a word to appear in the index, we're going to mark the word or the group of words. Once we've marked all of the words that we want to appear in the index, we can then go and create the index. So the first thing I'm going to mark to appear in the index is the title here, so where it says Driving Directions to Smith. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go up to my index group and I'm going to select Mark Entry. So it's picked up my main entry. It's on the current page. And I could choose to make this bold or italics if I want. Now, because this is the title, I might choose to make it bold. And I'm going to say mark. Now, let me just close this little pane. Now, what you'll see when you do mark an entry is that Word will automatically turn on the non-printing characters. So you can kind of see the field that's sitting behind this text that I've marked. Now, something else that I also want to mark is every occurrence of the word Smith. So I can see Smith down here, but the word Smith occurs quite a few times throughout this document and I want to mark them all. So how can I do that? Well, if I go back to the Home tab and go to our Find option, which we've used in the past, and it's got Smith, it's automatically picked it up because I already had the word highlighted, and it's telling me there are seven occurrences of the word Smith, and it's highlighted them all for me in the document. So now every occurrence is highlighted, what I can do is go back to my References tab, and I can say Mark Entries. And I don't want these in bold or italic this time, so I'm just going to say Mark All, and Close. So very quickly, I've been able to just mark multiple occurrences of the same word. Now, what else do I want to mark in here? Well, I think I'm going to mark Coming from the North, and just click Mark. And I'm going to move this over there and close. I'm going to do coming from the south, mark entry, mark. Coming from the east, mark entry, mark. And coming from the west, mark entry, mark. And close. So I have numerous things now marked in my document that I want to appear in my index. And of course, in a real world scenario, if you have a very long document, you might have a lot more things marked. And this can sometimes take a little bit of time, but it does make inserting and updating your indexes a lot easier. So once you're done marking, what we then want to do is actually go to the end of the document and insert the index. So if I scroll down to the final page just here, I actually like to have my indexes on an entirely blank page. So I'm going to put a page break in here. And if you remember from before, the shortcut key for a page break is Control Enter or Control Return, whichever you prefer. And what I can now do is I can go back up to my References ribbon, I can go into the Index group and I can select Insert Index. Now this gives me various options related to my index. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say right align page numbers because that will make everything look a little bit neater. And you can select a tab leader. Remember we looked at these in previous modules. Most of the time you'll see the dotted tab leader so I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to keep my formats from the template. Now by default you'll have two columns for your index. I actually just want one column so I'm going to take that down. And then I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. Now let me just turn off those non-printing characters. There you can see we have our index. And if you remember the driving directions to Smith, we selected bold. So that page number is now in bold. You could then, of course, go in. You could add a title that says index if you wanted to. And it's worth noting that if you ever want to update this index, all you would need to do was go back into your document. You'd mark anything additional that you wanted to add to your index 
and then you would come down here and you would update. So let me actually just show you that because I think it's quite an important point. So I'm going to go down to this last page and I'm just going to mark this title here. So let's go back to references, mark entry. And because this is a title, I might want to make it bold and I'm going to say mark. So now I have something additional marked that I want to include in my index. So all I need to do is click on the index and I have two options here. I could right click my mouse and choose update field or alternatively, if you look up on the references ribbon, you also have an update index button. So I'm just going to do update field and there we go. It's added it into the index. So very, very simple to just add additional things in and then update your index. So that is how an index works. And you'll see when we do the table of contents in the next module, it's along similar lines. So let's wrap up this module now and move on to creating a table of contents. I will see you over there. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course on Word 2019. We're down in section 14 where we've been taking a look at how to create indexes. And now in this second module, we're going to talk about creating a table of contents in a document. Now, I'm pretty sure we're fairly familiar with what a table of contents is. So it's just that thing that you find at the start of books or manuals or documents that tell you which page certain sections are located on. And we can create one very simply in Word. And really, it's not that dissimilar to the index that we were creating before. It's probably even uh, slightly simpler, I would say. Now, this document that we have on the screen, currently nothing stands out too much. It's quite hard for me to decipher what's a heading and what isn't. Now, something that's really important before you create your table of contents is that you have your documents set up correctly. And that means making sure that you have styles and headings in your document. Because the way that a table of contents works is that it looks through the document for headings. So maybe heading one, two, three, whichever you specify and pulls those headings to construct its own table of contents automatically. But before it can do that, you need to make sure that you do have headings in your document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to use my styles up here to add a bit of structure to this document. So this first line here is the main title. So I'm going to give that a heading one. And then I'm going to have each of these where it says coming from the north, coming from the south, coming from the east as heading twos. Now I'm going to select them all in one go by holding my control key and just clicking and I'm going to apply heading two to all of those. So immediately you can see my document is now taking on a little bit more structure. And finally down the bottom here, I have this rogue paragraph on a different page. I'm going to click that and I'm going to give that a heading one as well. All right, so now I have some basic structure to my document. Now you could go through, you might have a much longer document, you might have heading one, two, three, four, all different levels of headings in your document. And that's perfectly fine because you can adjust your table of contents and tell it how many levels of heading you want to pull through. It might be that when you do construct your table of contents, you only want anything that's marked with a heading one, or it might be that you want to pull through items that are marked as a heading one and a heading two, and you can really sort of customize that and tell Word what it is that you want to pull through. Now, before we add in our table of contents, I just want to make this document look a little bit nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the insert ribbon and I'm going to add a cover page. I'm just going to add this one just here. So there we go. So now I have a nice cover page. And what I want is I want to have my cover page, then I want to have my table of contents, and then I want to have my document. So I need to make some room for that table of contents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my mouse in front of where it says driving directions to Smith, and I'm going to insert a page break. So up on the insert ribbon, we have a page break option. I'm going to click it. And there we go. It's dropped it down to page three. And I now have this blank page in the middle. It's worth noting if you want to get a better overall view of what your document's looking like, if you go to the view ribbon and go to multiple pages, you can see them side by side. So this blank page in the middle is where I'm going to place my table of contents. Now I'm going to say 100% just to put that back. So what you might want to do on this page is you might want to put in table of contents 
I'm just going to format that heading very slightly. So I'm going to make it uh, Calibri. Let's make it a bit bigger. I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to put it in the center like so. Now let's press enter and I'm just going to left align. And this is where I'm going to insert my table of contents based on those heading styles that I've applied. Let's go up to the references ribbon. And this first group here is our table of contents group. So let's click our table of contents button. And there are lots of different pre-formatted styles that you can use. Now I'm fairly happy with this first one. I'm going to say automatic table one. And there we go. Now you can see here it's putting contents. Now I actually want my heading in there. So I'm just going to delete out where it says contents. And there we have our lovely table of contents. And you can see here mine set to pick up anything I've marked as a heading one and a heading two. If you want to take a look at those settings, if you click in your table of contents and right click your mouse and go to edit field, what you can do in this list is you can scroll down and you can find the table of contents field and you can go in and you can start to modify those different options. So you can see here mine set to show three levels. So I don't have any heading threes in my document, which is why you can only see headings one and two in my table of contents. So I could take that down to just say show two levels. You could modify this if you had maybe sort of up to five headings, you could put that up to five to show all five. So it's entirely up to you how you structure that. And I'm going to click on OK. Now, anytime you do make any kind of change, it's going to say replace this table of contents. So I'll just say yes, and there's not going to be too much change there. What you'll also notice is that you have an update table button. So if you make any changes, so if you add in more headings or maybe if things move around and your page numbers change, you can just click update table and it will update the table of contents. Let me show you what I mean by that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this last heading, so this one that's located on page three, so let's scroll down, and I'm going to move that onto page four by just inserting a quick page break. So I'm going to press Control Enter, which will push that paragraph down onto page four. Let's go back up to our table of contents. And you can see currently it's still telling me that that last section is still on page three. And that's because I need to say update table. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to update my page numbers only or do I want to update the entire table? Now, if you know that you've just moved a piece of text from one page to another, you could say update the page numbers only. But sometimes it's worth just doing update entire table just to make sure that it catches everything. And there we go. You can see that it's now updated to page four. So pretty simple to add in a table of contents into your document and to update it. So now we're coming to the end of this section. All that's left to do is a quick practice exercise where I want you to enter your own indexes and own tables of contents into a document. Once you've done that, we'll move on to section 15, where we'll be talking about reviewing and printing a document. So I will see you there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so that you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get the full Microsoft Word 2019 course, including follow along exercise files, click over there and click over there to watch all the videos in this Word 2019 playlist.